President Muhammadu Buhari's visit to his farm barely three days after schoolboys are kidnapped in the same state sparks outrage. And Governor of River State, Yesam Wike, comes hard on PDP's National Working Committee. He denies report of planned defection. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladengi. Welcome, let's get started. It's been about four days since the Kankara school boys were abducted and still no word has been heard from President Muhammadu Buhari directly. The presidency had, however, earlier released a statement which said the president condemned the attack. The president also came under attack after a video showing his visit to his farm in the same state of Katsina emerged on social media. And still on the attack, Boko Haram has claimed responsibility for the abduction, stating that the, it is a promotion of Islam as its reason. Joining us to discuss this and to look at other salient issues around what is going on with this kidnap, we have the former assistant director of DSS, uh, Dennis Amakri. Good evening, Mr. Dennis Amakri. Good evening. How are you today? Oh, very fine. We also have Mr. Bedion here, who is also going to, another security expert, who is going to do justice to this topic. Good evening, Mr. Bedion. Good evening, Kayane. Good evening. Yeah. I, uh, whichever way, by way of first mention. Let me start with uh, Mr. Dennis and Macri. Um, I, I want to stay away from what the ranting is all about in social media and look at the meat of this issue. Now, the concern here is the attitude, the response system of our leaders in this part of the world. Uh, even without watching movies, we see what happened in different climes. We see how presidents abandon their visit, abandon their issues, and get straight to the matter by visiting the place rather than just releasing a statement via their... Uh, media hates. Do you think Nigerian is, Nigerians are asking for too much, Mr. Amakri? Uh, they're not asking for too much. And uh, of course, um, uh, we are always asking for the president to either talk to us or visit somewhere, you know, and stuff like that. I, I think uh, those ones are even diversionary for us. Because we have now left the real thing of what is going on and worrying about whether the president is coming to visit uh, the parents or it would have been very nice if we would go and visit them. But uh, that is not the issue. The issue now is um, why uh, these boys have been kidnapped and uh, after how many days now uh, we've not been able to rescue them. The mandatory 48 hours with which we can get them back is passed. So, um, it is the cause for worry that uh, what happened in Chibok is uh, actually repeated itself again. It shows that we've not learned a lot of lessons, and then, of course, um, we need to, you know, do something about it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bedion, I, I, I don't know whether you also... I totally agree that we should not stay away from the issue, but as humans, as uh, civilians that we are, we believe that coming straight to the theater of event has a long way in easing the pains. Don't you also think so? I think so. I think so. And it, it is the clamor of um, Nigerians, especially with a lot of events that have happened in the last few months. It, it's been the clamor of Nigerians for proved efforts of the government are displaying empathy. Empathy is crucial in these times. Um, already, when you have people who have gone through a pandemic and a lockdown, as was experienced in the last few months, you will find that people are looking for hope in every direction they can get it. And we look to our leaders to provide hope for us. Um, in this sort of situation, 
it would have been very empathetic of the president. It would have helped to calm frayed nerves. Uh, but we see that he hasn't done that. And it just makes people more worried because one of the reasons that led to the, um, to the outbreak of violence when the NSAS protests were going on was because people felt the president was not being responsive or showing empathy to what was going on. We had the sitting governor of Lagos State visit the site of the protest. Uh, that was before the um, incident of October 20th. Um, but we've, we've seen that since then, our government has not learned the lessons they should have learned. And it's worrisome because um, with the politics being heated the way it is, it's just a matter of time. And we hope it doesn't get to that point where there can be an explosion and people just, there can be chaos and anarchy. And we don't want that to happen. Okay. Uh, Mr. McCree, let's uh, look at um, what you call the, the main issue. And uh, we're getting worried. Four days. And the response we're getting is, Oh, they've been relocated to Zamfara State. Now we hear that the deadly Boko Haram is claiming responsibility. And we've heard these boys, the, the boys that escaped, giving us some kind of uh, insight to work on. Is there something that we do not understand on how security works? Well, the latest uh, intel that is coming out from the front uh, at, the, at the area there, is that um, they have been able to remove them from the Katsina state into Zamfara. Uh, for now, uh, we strongly believe that they are still in Zamfara state. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Boko Haram has come into some kind of uh, negotiation with them where they have sold them to Boko Haram. Now, Boko Haram will now go ahead and uh, do all the negotiations or all the trading that they want to do. It happens with kidnappers. You know, uh, usually uh, the process of kidnapping, or should I say the organizational structure of kidnapping is uh, where you find uh, watchers, the people that watch the victim. And then of course the catchers, that, those are the people who actually go and uh, remove the people from where they are. And then of course the keepers, now, the keeping is a very, very difficult issue, especially when you are dealing with about more than 100 or 50, uh, 50 people, you know. Uh, so it will need a bigger, a bigger person. Uh, that also happened when we had the Niger Delta issue, where uh, some people will kidnap people and then they take them to uh, the bigger, the bigger uh, militants who can uh, afford to keep them, feed them, and negotiate. So apparently, this um, from the announcement of uh, Shekau, the Boko Haram uh, uh, kingpin, it has shown that uh, they must have uh, had a kind of agreement with him. And then from there, he, he will take it off from here. But they are still in Katsin, uh, in Zamfara. So uh, what the security agencies can do right now is to intercept and then, of course, do all possible means of either intercepting or getting them back because they have to transfer them all the way back to Sabisa, where uh, Boko Haram is uh, uh, holding sway. Okay. Uh, um, that, that exactly is my worry <laughs> as someone who is observing the situation. And that takes me back to Egbedion. Can we look at um, the nature of uh, 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 the nature of our security? How people are able to move such number of people into another state? And we are also seeing a dangerous trend there, which the NGF chairman, that's the governor of Ekiti State, hinted that these bandits are terrorists. They are from the Boko Haram. They are spreading. Is this a case of exchange, you know, between the bandits and the Boko Haram terrorists, or these are Boko Haram elements already infiltrating into the Northwest? I'm sure Mr. Dennis would also like to respond on that, but let me start with you. Mr. Bedion, can you hear my question? Hello? Okay. 
Okay, Mr. Dennis, if you can hear me, can you just respond to that? I'll come back to Mr. Okay, Mr. Dennis, can, you, can I have your take? I'll come back to him later. Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I have mentioned mm -hmm. this in different fora uh, that I'm... all these people we no. call bandits today are actually elements of Boko Haram who had uh, already been infiltrated into the Nigerian mainland. Hmm. You know, so, and what do they do? They are like uh, the, 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 the people that source for funds, they source for food, they source for all kinds of stuff. You know, they are bandits because they are, they are out of their home, home, home uh, 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 should I say, base. And uh, when they are inside the country, they also like sleeper cells. They, they stay in certain localities where they go ahead and uh, either um, kidnap people or rob banks or whatever they do to raise money. And then, of course, return the money back to base in uh, Sabisa Forest. That's exactly my worry. And uh, if I'm able to get Peter back, I also like his perspective on these. I'm looking at, uh, how did this move, you know? Uh, are we saying that the roads, there are no roadblocks? Are we saying that nobody suspects this move? Are we surprised about the proliferation of arms if this could happen between states and among states? I don't know if you could help me out. But you know that we have a lot of ungoverned spaces. Okay. And when we talk about governed spaces, we are talking about areas that there is no presence of law enforcement. Wow. No simple presence of law enforcement. Then we have porous borders. Porous borders in the sense that there are no custom or immigration officers that monitor this in and out of our, of our borders. So these are the people that can move and they have their route where they can move all the way from uh, Sabisa in Borno State, all the way down to Sokoto, or all the way down to Abuja, and then following the very thick forest uh, routes that exist in this country. Hmm. That's why we are advocating for the presence of law enforcement in every local, all the 70, 774 local governments. Local government. Okay. Exactly. That, that, I, I'm coming back to some kind of solutions. Do we have a Bedion plot, please, back? Do we have him back now? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Oh, please. Uh, if you I'm could uh, drop some of your comments in so my previous questions. Yes, I can. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I, I believe um, is is nature of operations like this, insurgencies like this, as they... As they they, they seek for for public recognition and, and validation it took, um, to undertake incidents like we've seen them take take on now. So the, some of the guys who you see that we call bandits, they've they've learned from the they've they've, they've capitalized on the on the on the gains of Boko Haram, so to speak, to come up with their own criminality. Criminality often thrives where criminality is um, is expanded. So because they've seen um, successes of Boko Haram and the weaknesses of, this, of the Nigerian state in, in repelling those attacks, it has emboldened criminal elements to come out and also under the guise of Boko Haram carry out their own nefarious activities. However, we still see, now that Boko Haram has taken responsibility for this particular incident, it, it, it gives allusion, it gives credence to the fact that Boko Haram actually is in charge of the governance of many of those spaces that um, uh, Mr. Macri referred to. And it's worrisome because if Nigerian government does not do much or is seen to do much quickly, the, the, the citizens, I mean, we don't want to resort to a place where um, people believe that the government has failed totally. I mean, we've heard stories of it before in different ways, but we've, we've seen um, soldiers desert the army. We even heard of the court martial of um, um, the general a few weeks ago because of a video that, that leaked of what he saw on, on, the, on the side, how they were run by Boko Haram. We are concerned that this continuous, um, um, let me put it this way, expansion of Boko Haram and those bandits is the same thing. They are one and the same. They are six and a half a dozen. Okay, Mr. Amakri, let's do the mathematics. 774 local governments, 
30,000 or is it 300,000? I'm trying to remember. Okay, I think it should be 300,000 policemen and uh, governing 20 million people. Now we're looking at the armed forces, which I perceive should be less in terms of number. How far away are we in securing the lives and property of the people? Let's even talk about lives first, before we even dare into property. Are we in a precarious situation that calls for what people describe as state of emergency, or we actually have no idea of what has befallen us? We are in a very precarious situation. And uh, because we are in a precarious situation, any move right now by government to take care of it, you know, because when there are problems, uh, we also need decisive action to take care of it. Now, if there is a state of emergency, yes, because it will be focused and it will be very decisive in dealing with whatever problem that is going to come around. We have about 774 local governments. And then, of course, Nigeria is more than 220 million people. You know, now come to think of these uh, security forces. Uh, the, the, the police itself is less than 400,000 uh, people. And the military, that's Army, Navy, and Air Force, is about 310,000 hmm. on ground. Now, when you look at all these people, uh, you find out that, uh, let's say, the total amount of security forces altogether are not up to one million. They are not up to one million. And uh, when you look at other countries like Egypt, Egypt, which we are more than them, and of course, per capita income, we are supposed to be more than them, we have more money than them, but they have about 1.8 million policemen, you know, in their country. Hmm. So what are we doing? We can spend a lot of money, take care of this, or we can use resources that are available to us. For instance, private security guards. Private security guards are more than 2 million in Nigeria, and they are everywhere. They are everywhere. And that's why you find out that some states are coming up with a Moteku, neighborhood watch, all kinds of things to protect themselves. If government is not fit enough to gather all these people to take care of the whole country as it is, these are extra, extra people that can be uh, put into the security Integrated. architecture yeah, to, to, to help. You know, and uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money. All you have to do is to create the synergy that could, you know, uh, uh, control or gather the kind of information that they will give you. Because at the end of the day, it is information or intelligence that is needed, not actually manpower. Interesting, interesting. And Peter, that also gives me some kind of concern. Uh, because still talking about the number, <laughs> this less than 400,000 policemen, we see them. Uh, um, guarding quite a few number of people. I'm talking about the politicians. I'm talking about, despite the directive from the IG, we still see them all around protecting these few people. And probably this is one of the major issues where the people that will take this decision are hardly concerned because they've been protected. Don't you think so? Yes, I think they've been protected and they feel that they are safe. But I think they are also coming to discover that we are moving on. The country is not going to slag or slag behind because of them. You know, many of them have to realize that no matter how many kind of mopole that you use in gathering yourself, you know, uh, when bandits who are, who are ragtag soldiers or ragtag soldiers of fortune get into town, you know, um, they could, they could, they could, uh, they could have some of these uh, okay. well guarded people. So okay. the best thing for us to do is to either fortify the police, give them the better training that they need, and then let them protect everybody, including the politicians. Interesting. Okay, uh, 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 Peter, I also noticed that uh, that question was actually also for you. Uh, if you want to respond, please go ahead. Evidently, the political class is, is getting away with murder, so to speak, in a proverbial manner, because they realize that, like as Mr. Macri mentioned, that many of the Nigerian people 
have what we call um you have a short memory. So after a few weeks, a few weeks of um social media um, rants opera, and the rest. everything dies down, go back to normal. It 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 is and again, what they are doing on in unknown to them is that they are playing, they are, they, are, they are causing the people to be agitated. We have seen the governments say that there, there should be no protest of any kind, and people are feeling insecure. At some point, things will get to a tipping point if the government does not address the security issues that sh as should be. If, we, if on the streets of Lagos, for instance, where I live, for a few weeks after the NSAS protest came to an end, or the way that it ended, we saw that there was very little security presence visibly on the streets and it emboldened these miscreants to come out and do different things. It's ironic that during the NSAS protest, when, the, when, the, when it took a violent turn, that many of the so-called politicians who are super, who should be responsible for what's happening in Nigeria were nowhere to be found. They were exposed. And, and why there's concern that even with state policing, if we get to that point in the country, that it may favor these are politicians who are who have who have local presence. We are requesting that they don't take these things, they don't treat it with kick gloves anymore, because if they do, the outcome can be worse than Rwanda in uh, in '94. Okay. Uh, uh, in specifics now, this will be my last question to you. Then Mr. Dennis Amakri will round it off. So, Peter, what is the way? What is the immediate step that should be taken to safeguard our children? Because children are the most vulnerable when you look at different, uh, you know, social strata. What should be done? Boarding schools, day school, what should be done? All across the country now. Well, um, even if it seems a bit uh, missensitive, even elderly citizens are as important as the younger citizens. So if we, if, we, if we neglect or if we overemphasize one sector or one, one cadre or one demographic over the other, it's, it's been unfair to the generality of Nigerians. And it, it means that government is shirking its responsibility to every Nigeria. What should be done is that, first of all, um, if our emotions are frayed, the government should be sensitive to the, to the, to the feelings and, sens and, and the sensibilities of the people that is leading. Because if a failure to do that, it, it begins to give the government illegitimacy. And once the people feel the government is illegitimate and has lost its goodwill, then it, it, gives, it gives people grounds for, 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 for them to recall politicians. Or for, I mean, all sorts of things can happen from there. It can spiral out of control. What should be done is that the government should be more sensitive to the will, will of the people, emotions of the people, and take proactive measures to prevent these things from happening. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Dennis Amakri, one government after the other, You've seen their promises. I remember this administration when they were coming. We are moving the headquarter to Baronu. And here we are. It appears it is not about who is in charge. Is it about a personality change or a systemic change? I think uh, there is going to be supposed to be a systemic change. And uh, there are two things, two very important things. You know, one, the security agencies, including the police, especially the DSS, I would recommend that they become independent. Let them not be part of the president or part of any governor. You know, they should be independent. And their allegiance should be to the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. That way, they are free to deal with whatever they see as against the national interest. But right now, the way they are set up, they are basically set up not only for this particular regime. If you go to our constitution, you'll find out they are basically for regime protection. Hmm. And that does not help us. That does not help us at all. But again, when you come to think of the school children, well, there was what they call the Safe School Initiative, which uh, was launched sometime by Gordon Brown and uh, they spent about, about $10 million was put on ground for, to, to protect all the schools in this country, all of them, you know, where 
they have to create community security groups that will be protecting each school 24 hours a day. That has not been done. All these schools are just sitting down there as uh, sitting ducks. And of course, the terrorists will come out. They know that they will come, kidnap some children, and will go ahead and pay. So I think the government should also come up with a zero tolerance in paying ransom money. Because the more we pay, the more they will keep okay. on coming back. Okay, Mr. Dennis Amakri, uh, I'm sure you have so much for us. You have much to tell us, but we quite appreciate your intervention on this matter. Dennis Amakri, former assistant uh, uh, director in DSS, thank you for your time. And uh, Mr. Peter Egbedion, thank you for your contribution. We sincerely hope that probably the next time we'll call you, we'll be talking about the safe return of the children and what should be done to avert a repeat. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Yes, and we'll take a short break now. And when we return, River State Governor Yesom Wike tells us his plan surrounding defection. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>